Hello and a very warm welcome to the first episode of season five of Brooks TV. Mm. I'm Gavin. And I'm Anna. And coming up in today's episode. Video rental looks bleak in Oxford as yet another store closes. We paid a visit to the Ashmolean a year on from its renovations to see the new Pre-Raphaelites and Italy exhibition. And we've got a roundup of all this week's sports results, plus a special feature about Ultimate Fitness. So Anna, tell me, have you recovered from the, uh, the clocks going back last week? I have, but it just means that the nights are getting seriously dark and my days are over by four o'clock. Tell me about it, it's not good at all. Um, especially, I'm a cyclist, I cycle home from university, getting, getting it when it gets dark earlier, it's not good. It's not, and do you know what you need, Gav? What do I you need? You need a light. And I'm pretty sure you're not the only idiot who hasn't bought their bike light mm. yet, because the police have just launched a campaign to target all you city cyclists without any supervision. It's as easy as riding a bike, a common phrase to use in everyday language, but is it? Riding at night through the city streets can be a risky business. £30. That's how much you'll be fined if you're stopped by the police without a light on your bike on the streets of Oxford at night. In the past few weeks, police in the county have stepped up a campaign to make sure bike users know the full implications of riding bikes without proper visibility and stress the use of lights is vital, especially in the darkness of the winter months ahead. Oxford for centuries has been renowned for bikes and even today it is hard to turn a corner without seeing one. Over the last year, many people have lost their lives needlessly on the roads of the county due to lack of visibility. Many people were surprised by the law enforced by Thames Valley Police to give a fixed £30 fine to anyone spotted without adequate lighting equipment. We asked cyclists if they knew they would be fined if they rode a bike at night and if they thought the campaign would be a good idea. I think that's, um, no, I think it's a bit excessive. Um, but a good idea, I guess, to, to encourage safety. Yeah, good idea. They should wear lights, otherwise probably going to get in an accident, right? Yes, I, I agree with it. If you can then go and buy bike lights and get the £30 off, if you prove that you've bought bike lights, then that's okay. Um, do you ride a lot at night? I do, actually. Um, and I don't have, a, don't have a light. I probably should. Um, so I, I guess it would encourage me to get one. I guess I should. I actually hadn't heard about that until now. Um, but I guess I think encouraging safety is good. Do you ride at night? With yeah, with lights, night? yeah. yeah. Oh, you could get killed otherwise. You can't see people without lights, so it's fair enough. Thames Valley Police are hoping that by reinforcing this campaign, they will be able to reduce the number of casualties and deaths due to poor visibility. We've been out here a little while, and I'm happy to say there are a lot of people with lights on their bikes, but how visible is visible? maybe the law should include high visibility clothing as well. I'm Nelson Thomas, signing off for Brooks TV on the wet streets of Oxford. Now, Anna, can you tell me what this is? Well, it's obviously a DVD, you muppet. Oh yeah, cheers for that. But it does look like DVD rentals may soon become a thing of the past, is mm. actually what I was meaning. Yeah. Given the fact that Blockbuster was founded 25 years ago, it's been around pretty much all my life, and uh, I've got used to it being there. Exactly, so it was such a shock to hear that the branch on Cali was closing down because out of all the things on Cali Road, the last thing I expected was blockbusters. So Jamie Keane finds out more. It seems in Oxford, film rental is slowly becoming a thing of the past as another video retailer has been forced to close this month. Earlier this year, we saw the demise of Cali Road's independent retailer, Video Syncratic, and now, movie rental giant Blockbuster have been driven to close their doors on the Cowley Road. Even Oxfordshire's libraries are feeling the strain from the latest trends, as they have seen a fall in DVD rentals as people turn elsewhere for their film fix. But why has the current market shifted? Many speculate the rise in illegal as well as legal downloads on the internet, as well as the increasing rise in digital TV, with companies such as Sky and Virgin making seeing and recording new films as easy as a click of a button. Of course, this is not the only reason. 
John Spearer, former owner of Idiosyncratic, says, rental copies are more expensive and can only be produced once, so you can't replace them. And supermarkets sell DVDs below wholesale price, so why go to a video shop? But is the reason for retailers' struggle just down to piracy and cheap DVDs? Or is it just failure to adjust to the developing world? So how often do you rent DVDs? Yeah, um, not often. Never really. So what does Blockbuster mean to you? Are you upset about the closure of the Cali Road branch? No, it personally doesn't affect me. I don't shop there, so it's not an issue. But I suppose it's a shame for those that do. What do you think about Blockbuster and Cowley closing? I mean, what does Blockbuster mean to you? I live down Cowley Road and we love, as a house, renting DVDs is much better than going to the cinema. Online DVD rentals and legal movie streaming have been on the rise with companies such as Love Film and Blinkbox seeing increasing customers and profits. Even though Blockbuster have joined the online rental world, it seems too little too late, with the parent US company declaring bankruptcy, and with a huge fall in revenue over the course of the year resulting in store closures around the UK. Even with stores managing to survive in the DVD rental industry, it seems that for Oxford it's an industry that's lost the fight. I'm Jamie Keane, reporting for Brooks TV. Now we turn to a something a little bit more serious, which will affect all students. I pay over £3,000 a year to study, and recently found out that this ticket could treble. This means that when my uh, little brother starts uni in 2012, he could be paying £9,000 a year just for tuition alone. When you add this to living expenses, he will be finishing uni with a whopping £40,000 debt. So what are the chances of this actually happening? Thousands of students are protesting on London Day after plans to raise tuition fees up to £9,000. Staff and students from all over the UK travel to London to voice their concern for the plan. The new proposed campaign will mean universities can charge £6,000 for a typical undergraduate degree, with some universities being able to charge up to £9,000. This increase is due to government cuts in which funding for most humanity and art degrees will be stopped. These courses rely heavily on funding as they do not cater for large quantities of students and as a result they are most likely going to be forced to close. What has basically happened for a lot of the courses is they're cutting the funding to those courses, that's why fee has to go up. So in terms of fees going up, it will be looking back at um, cutting funding that will affect students straight away. Um, NUS and HSBC, their research a couple of years back, suggesting something like 70% of students would be deterred away from university if fees were to go up to £7,000. And there is no reason to suggest that that would change. The funding cut is going to come in straight away, i.e. from March onwards. So pretty much anything that they've announced cuts on will lose teaching budgets, which will mean staff will be going, um, you have less books, you have less resources to study with, etc, etc. And the knock-in effect goes on for the next few years. What's going to happen is you're going to get a current generation of all of the graduates and the market, regardless of how old they are, still with a degree, still being in the job market. So you're probably looking at about 25, 30 years before anything would change. I, I pay for my, uh, my course fees myself, so if, if they do raise it, I won't be able to continue. I generally think it's not such a bad idea, as there'll be uh, more um, jobs for me when I come out of university, there'll be less graduates, and there should be more one-on-one -on -one time with the tutors. The march organised by the National Union of Students and the University of College Union began at 11.30 today at Horse Guards Avenue and marched through Westminster. We have got 106, sorry, 170 people confirmed to go from Brooks alone. Um, the NUS is anticipating at least 20,000 students from the entire UK will be there. As you can see, students are not very optimistic about this entire situation. Hopefully today's protest will encourage the government to find alternatives. This is James Burden for Brooks TV. As Nick mentioned, the, the march for the protest against student fees is taking place as we speak mm. um, Wednesday, and we have a few... A few reporters from the Brooks TV team who are down there at the moment. Very um, exciting. Indeed, basically sort of filming about what's going on. And um, we've just had a little chat with them and we can confirm that um, they've actually set fire, not our students in general, but <laughs> yeah. um, a bunch of students have set fire to placards and broken into various buildings. So. It's a topic that everyone feels really passionate about. Indefinitely. So now we're going to move on to something artistic which won't just interest art students. The Ashmolean Museum in town has a new exhibition which delves into the world of the pre-Raphaelites in Italy. The new innovation works are winning all kinds of architecture prizes, national and international, and is partly the reason why they've been able to set up this special exhibition. With some powerful images and beautiful sculptures, Nick Church went down to see it for us.
The recent renovations at the Ashmolean have really allowed the museum to expand their exhibition space, so much so that they now have an offering for specialist collections like the current Pre-Raphaelites exhibition on display to the 5th of December. The Ashmolean building itself is a great attraction and the fact that this is the first uh, major exhibition to be held in our new exhibition galleries um, and that it's coupled with the name Pre-Raphaelites means that it has been enormously popular both far and wide and um, it's very gratifying to me to see uh, if you go to the train on, on the train to London you see on the platform at Reading for example posters for our exhibition this is as far as I know never happened before. The Pre-Raphaelites were a brotherhood of artists who wanted to return to a more golden age of art by adopting early Renaissance forms. The exhibition contains famous works such as Beata Beatrix by Rossetti, painted by the artist as a testament to the model after her death. The interest from the show has created waves amongst the local community, with shops like Sanders of Oxford having their own exhibition selling prints of the period. We caught up with George Richards, an employee of Sanders, about the importance of the museum to the city. It's very um, Oxfordian in that it has a sort of it's a traditional building on the one hand, with its old facade, and then on the other hand, it's, it's a very modern thinking building. So I think, it's, I think it's quite in keeping with Oxford and, and even Brooks. I think Brooks is obviously it's a modern institution, but it's becoming a much more stable part of Oxford. Oxford has always been a city that's embraced its art and culture. Now the fantastic new renovations at the Ashmolean and outlets like Sanders providing affordable period prints, there's never been a better time to get stuck into art. This is Nick Church for Brooks TV. So Anna, have you been to the Ashmolean since it's been restored? I haven't, but after seeing that, I've got to say it looks pretty good and it looks like they've put that £50 million to really good use. Indeed, which makes me think, what would I do with £50 million? Uh, how about a uh, potential new haircut, maybe? What? <laughs> well, while, fine. while Gamma thinks about that, let's have a look at what's coming up in the second half. Oxford's Clean Look Greener campaign celebrates its first birthday by the its 500 final. And, and stick around to learn about the ultimate frisbee for us for week's sport results. Also remember you can get in touch with us by emailing brookstv at brooks.ac.uk where you can send us stories um, about what you've been up to or anything you know and um, we can hopefully get it covered. Yeah, and remember to visit our website btv.brooks.ac.uk where we've got all the previous episodes plus extras that you will not want to miss. Indeed, so we'll see you after the break.